him as John William Arnold Sr. My name is John William Arnold Sr. And I'm about to conduct a military service interview of Jack Carlisle Beddingfield. We're doing this in my home at 108 Northwest J. Allen Avenue in Burleson, Texas. This project is sponsored by the Burleson Heritage Foundation, of which I am a member. All right, Mr. Beddingfield, when and where were you born? I was born January the 26th, 1925, in, in a farmhouse in Anderson County, Texas. And which branch of service were you in? I started out in the, in the infantry, and after, after the war was over with, I transferred to the Air Force. That's World War II you're speaking yes, of? Yes, World War II. Which, which uh, unit were you in in World War II in the infantry? I was in the 30th Infantry Division, the 117th uh, Infantry Regiment, Company F. Company F, all right. Uh, then what other services did you do? What were you, you went to the Air Force, you said. Right. After, after, after the war was over, they were requesting people to consider re-enlisting, so I told them if I could get in the, in the Air Corps at the, that at that time, that I would consider re-enlisting. And he said, we could certainly do that. And I said, well, I would like to have a choice of station. If we can do that, I said, all right, I'll re-enlist. And I re-enlisted in the Air Corps on the 30th of November, 1945. You want to insist? Then the first time that you went in was November the 9th, 1943. Correct. And when you got discharged, you, you asked to go to the Air Force. That's correct. All right, how long were you in the Air Force then? Until 1st of July, 1967. Any other branches you served in times? No. All right, that's it. What was the highest rank you attained? Chief Master Sergeant E-9. That was in the Air Force? In the Air Force. Air Force. Chief Master Sergeant E-9. All right. All right, now what's some of your most memorable occasions that you remember? Well... Combat infantry and so forth, what, what did you uh, remember the most? I remember pretty well going uh, across Omaha Beach, and I think it was about three weeks after D-Day. <clears throat> we went in the same way that they did on the invasion. We crawled down off the ship on the cargo nets and into a, a landing craft and they boarded us over to shore. But they, the only difference was they wasn't shooting at us. Well, that's good. All right. Well, you have a purple heart, I know that. Uh, where were you and how did you get that? That was in the Battle of the Bulls. January the 16th, 1945, that was my mother's birthday, so that was my birthday present. Well, I'll say. <laughs> and the, we had turned the tide. We, we were advancing against the Germans, but there was a tank up in some woods, and somebody else was going to take care of him. And we were waiting in the holding area there uh, till, it, till he was gone. And he was shooting at these people over to my right, and one of the rounds ricocheted off of the icy ground and hit me in the back. All right. So the war was over for me. Okay, you went back to the hospital then? And anyway. Okay. Is there anything else that stands out in your memory you'd like to tell about? Well, I remember uh, VE Day. Good. Uh, it was a very exciting time. But any of the details, but it was very okay. Good, that's good. Relief to those that were fixing to go home. Is there anything else you'd like to tell about? Well, I don't think so. We've over over 23 years, you, you, you have a lot of experiences.